Laura Fraser, you know, I'm just dying to know, since filming your scenes in the series finale of Breaking Bad last year, do you know how in a, in a rational fear of sugar packets? <laughs> yeah, but I always did, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they always said that about me. Yeah, it's really weird when I'm in the supermarket and I see it. Uh, oh, there's that thing I never noticed. I di didn't even know about Stevia before. Right. A whole new world. And, you know, the last we saw of your character, Lydia Rodart Quayle, she was bedridden and poisoned with Walter's ricin. Do you ever wonder if Lydia maybe survived that, or or is there no hope? Is she a goner? I know. Um, when we were actually shooting that, in between one of the takes, the, the photographer, I can't remember her name, said, but wouldn't you just call 911 and go to the hospital and get sorted out? I'm like, yeah. Um, no, I think it was time for her to go. I mean... I like that she tried to um, get in there first and, and kill Walter first, but I think it was just, you know, a case of one sociopath too many, and she had to go, and she's gone. That's it. Enough, Redark Quail. <laughs> um, in your eyes, I, I love asking this question, was Lydia a hero or a villain? I like to think she was a little bit of both. Um, you know, there was, I loved it. I think it was very early on, before I really knew what she was like, that, um, there was a scene with her where she, I, I found her to be quite heroic, like when she when she has the gun at her head with uh, when Mike's about to shoot her and she doesn't beg and plead for her life. She just says, okay, here's how I'm going to die, but this is, this is how I want it to be. I, I mean, I would never have, have had the wherewithal to describe how someone should kill me and, and what they should do with me after I die, you know? I, I would definitely be the, the panicking, screaming um, mess. So I kind of thought that was a little bit her heroic. Um, and she does have the strength um, to, to muster up courage despite her, her horrific nerves and, and fear. So I think that's kind of heroic as well in a kind of sick, twisted kind of way. Mm -hmm. You know, I can imagine many people watching this interview now and saying, oh my gosh, she's not an American. You're, you're from <laughs> Scotland, right? Yeah, I am. I am from mm -hmm. Glasgow. And your American accent is just so good. How long did it take you to master that? Thanks. Um, uh, gosh. I, well, I did lots of school plays work with a really bad American accent, really cheesy, and kind of got slagged for that. So that probably helped um, me take the time to really practice it and I live upstate like in the countryside on a mountain in the woods and I kind of would wander the hills and just speak to myself in an American accent for months on end to try and get it right so I'm really glad that you think it is good so mm -hmm. thank you. And you joined Breaking Bad in 2012 at the start of the, the two-part final season. Um, tell us what it was like to join such a world-famous cast and who was the biggest diva on set? <laughs> the biggest diva? Um, yeah. Definitely Mike, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, I was a little bit intimidated. Um, at, at the same time, it was like joining this amazing party that's in full swing and you can't believe you've got an invitation and then that you get through the door. Um, the doorman lets you in. You're like, what? Um, but at the same time, I was frightened. Um, and I suppose a little bit self-conscious, like you're the new kid in the class or something, because they've all been together for so long. Um, but it was great, actually, to be nervous, because I was able to use those nerves for Lydia, one of the most nervous people ever. Um, so it was kind of handy. Yeah, but it was an immense <laughs> experience. Mm -hmm. And how extensive was the audition process? Did you audition... You know, from Scotland over tape, or did you go in for interviews? Um, the, it was one of the easiest jobs I've ever gotten because I never had to go to an audition. I never had to meet anyone or, you know, worry about messing up by saying the wrong thing or forgetting my lines or something. Um, it was just two tapes. I did a tape where they gave, you know, they, they were pretty secretive um, for obvious reasons. Um, so the scene I got for my first audition was um, just similar thematically to the scene in the diner with Mike in episode 502 Madrigal and uh, all similar themes but I think the story was something like that I had been 
burgled and a painting had been stolen and a Mike type character was um, doing some dodgy dealings with me. So I did that and then they liked that and then I was given the real scene from that episode Magical um, in the diner um, where I asked Mike to bump off some, some peeps. <laughs> Um, yeah, so and that, uh, from that second tape, I got the job, and I never actually met Vince till the following year, um, on wow. the day that my character died. So it was kind of like meeting my maker. <laughs> <laughs> and at first, you were just a guest star, but then you know, in the 2013 episodes, I guess the final half of the final season, you were upgraded to a series regular. <laughs> Um, and back when you originally were cast, did you know your character would be so important to the Breaking Bad universe? Um, I'm very egotistical, so yes, no, I didn't. I, I, I kind of thought it would be great. They said there was a possibility that maybe she would be, uh, the character would continue in the, the next batch of episodes, but it, it wasn't for sure, and, you know, nobody told me anything. I mean, like, nobody knew what was going to happen. Um, so, yeah, no, I had, what was the question again? Uh, <laughs> did, just to, did you know that Lydia would be so important to the, right. the overall story? No, absolutely not. Um, I had no idea. I had no idea what was going on. But I, I really don't know what's going on half the time in my life anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Most of your scenes on the show were with the guys, with Brian Cranston, Aaron Paul, Jonathan Banks. Do you secretly wish that maybe you could have had more screen time with the Breaking Bad sisters, Anna Gunn and Betsy Brandt? I know. I, I, I love, I mean, I love acting with anyone. It's brilliant. And everyone's brilliant in that show. Um, but I, I love doing scenes with women. And um, it would have been really interesting to have, um, well, I did have a little scene with, um, Skylar, but I'm, I remember meeting Betsy in once, like in, in at lunch one day, and she said, "We'll probably never work together, but nice to meet you." And <laughs> and that it was a flyby. It was like there there was Betsy, and I think I never saw her again until the following year. But yeah, maybe one day I'll get to work with those actors in something else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is the the spinoff Better Call Saul. Are, is, any word on a cameo on that show? Because it is a prequel, and your character would be alive. Well, I think, like, I've got this whole story that um, Lydia was actually half-brother and, like, Saul's actually her sibling, you know, and their mother abandoned them and they spent a lot of time in a group home. And then they got involved in very dodgy dealings and she went logistic way and he went the lawyer route and, you know, then they fell out and it was this massive thing. But um, I don't know if Vince is going to go for it, so we'll see. <laughs> and tell us about adopting some of those unique mannerisms for Lydia because she was a very physically quirky, and you said earlier, nervous character. Yeah. Do, you, do you think she had some physical? I, I don't know if I um, specifically did any physical. Uh, maybe they just instinctively happened when I was feeling that kind of anxiety, that kind of anxiety and the adrenaline. I don't know. What was I doing? What physical? Just like she was very uptight and very, like, you know, muscles very t tense. All the very time. rigid. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just um, she's kind of vibrates at a very high pitched frequency. You know, she's um, always like in fight or flight mode. And um, yeah, she's kind of like a cross between a a deer and a and a really angry little wasp. You know. <laughs> and um, you know, Jesse Plemons' character Todd, he had a major crush on Lydia, but it, it never really seemed like Lydia cared or even noticed. Um, in your opinion, what was this unique Todd Lydia relationship about? Was she just using him? I, I absolutely. I, at first, I think she was uh, a little bit flattered because um, I don't think. I mean, I think she's so closed off in so many areas and in denial in so many areas, and I don't think that sexuality is something that she really explores. Um, you know, in the last few years of her life, it's all been about you know the corporate world and all this stuff, and I think it was sort of absurd to her and she kind of looked at him like a specimen um, and I think had the, the story continued and had the, the show not ended it would have been really interesting to see like what kind of dark murky paths she would have led him down I mean I really feel really sorry for him that he that he had this crush on, on sick little Lydia because um, yeah dark work just dark works could be up ahead for those two to soak her up do you have a favorite Lydia scene or storyline from your two years? Because I have one. 
it was when you were you were down in, in with uh, Jonathan Banks. Uh, they were going to kill you, him and Walt and and Jesse, and you convinced them, you know, that you you knew about this train that was coming, and so you you saved your life by just you know telling them this wild story. That it was actually a true story. But like, do you have your own favorite Lydia moment? I that's my favorite. I love that. I that day was amazing. It was just so cool. I, I mean. It was t terrible at the same time because I was terrified because I'd got it the that episode three days before and I was trying to learn all this logistical information, you know, about you know trains and Flagstaff and times and coordinates, and I'm the most unlogistical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disorganized and you know just not good at that stuff. So I was really terrified to learn it. And then when when I when I had it, I just enjoyed playing that that stuff so much with those boys, and um, it was just such fun. It was like being at drama school or something, it was so cool. I, that's that's my favorite. That was my favorite scene to play. And tell us about working with Brian Cranston. He's such a, a legend on TV, and now he just won a Tony Award on Sunday. What was it like working with him? He, I, I'm so jealous of him. He's just such a spectacular human being. I mean, he's just to be that talented and generous and sweet and funny, but also be to be so chilled out and laid back. It's so cool. Like. You know, he doesn't ever seem to let the pressure build on him. He's just so cool. <laughs> just so cool. Yeah, it was kind of, um, yeah, I feel really lucky that I got to work with someone, you know, as wonderful and, and talented as him. And, you know, let's talk about the Screen Actors Guild Awards for a moment. You actually won an award there as part of the ensemble for Breaking Bad for Best Drama Ensemble. Congratulations, first of all. That's awesome. I, and, you know, tell us about that night. Um, well, I, I remember that we, me and my husband flew from New York to LA to be there, um, and my daughter went with our good friends and stayed in New York and had a, a, a like. Apparently, she had got to go to the ice rink three days in a row because they said, "Just tell us what you want to do." And so she told them. So she was doing that. Meanwhile, we were in Los Angeles, um, getting all dolled up and ready to go to the ball and uh, you know you go into this room with all these people that you admire and and, and, and you know what to emulate and I, you just, I just it was a bit breathtaking um, and my manager Tammy was there with us and we we just had a ball I mean just watching this unfold in front of your eyes and then you get to go up on the stage and look out at it from a completely different perspective and that was nice and <laughs> you feel it, it was extremely strange um, Coming from Scotland and being in this sort of Hollywood scenario it was so weird. Weird, good though. Oh yeah, definitely weird, good. Yeah. And we have a fan question uh, from Misty. Where do you keep your SAG trophy? <laughs> um, it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my bedroom right now, and it's over there. Um, just because um, upstairs is better because my daughter likes to grab it a lot and um, she pretends she's won so, some sort of Nobel Peace Prize I mean and the tears and then the, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah future actress. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and the Emmys work a little bit differently than the SAG Awards. If, you, if you're nominated for an Emmy Award you have to choose one episode from the season to submit to Emmy judges um, as, a, as an example of your best work. Um, have you given any thought at all, if you are to be nominated, um, what episode you would submit to the judges? Um, no, but I, I I don't know if I will be, so I'll wait and see if I if I am. Um, I'll probably start falling over full of pride if I if I um, start contemplating hmm, which which scene of my fabulousness am I going to do? <laughs> I just can't. Um, and besides Lydia from Breaking Bad, what role from your film and TV career do people most recognize you from when you're like walking down the street or, or at the supermarket? Um, mostly it's a, a Knight's Tale. Uh, it was a film I did with Heath Ledger mm -hmm. in about year 2000. Mm -hmm. um, the Blacksmith, and a lot of people recognize me from that. Yeah, that's the one mostly. Nice. And what project is next on the horizon for you now that Breaking Bad has basically cooked its last batch of meth, it's, it's done. What, what's next for you? Um, oh, I'm just in, I'm negotiating just uh, yesterday I got a job um, that we'll be shooting in LA in August, but I don't want to say what it is because we're not finished, it's not like all signed and all that stuff. Um, but it's a pilot. Cool. 
Well, best of luck on, on that and best of luck at the Emmy Awards. Um, I have a feeling Breaking Hi. Bad may be nominated for Best Drama. So are, if it is, are you going to be attending the awards? Um, I, I don't think I am. I haven't heard about anything. I don't know when it is, and nobody's asked me. Probably not. But maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll keep our eye out for you. Thanks okay. so much. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.